Hey guys, this is Hellbred. So, by popular demand, people have been asking me to do voice on some of these videos, so here we are, doing voice. So this build that we're looking at today is um, Rahal HRW, put forward by Melikus. Pretty crazy build. Um, so I've been testing this for the last uh, two hours, I guess. Maybe an hour and a half, something like that. Um, as you can see, we have our bloodlust coming off cooldown now, so it's an ideal time to start our next round. Basically, the way this build works is... Uh, well, I'll show you up a... Uh, pull some numbers here. Yeah, these will be fine. This is our last attempt. Um, Frost Strike is probably one of the harder hitters. Well, it's not, it's not a big hitter. It just does a lot of damage in this build. Um, along with Obliterate and Cold Heart and whatnot. So of course the the build that we're using is uh, uh, Rahal HRW CH Tor uh, I th level nine thirty three and one of the big determining factors uh, not not one there's a, there's a couple of big determining factors in this fight uh, in in this in this build uh, so just like every other um, build out there you know CH and uh, Sinjagosa's Fury can all crit and then raise your DPS to the nines um, that is as it is but the next sort of challenging thing is how you use your runes uh, so this, 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 this build as you can see is a, is a rune machine right you're just gonna have a lot of resources and so it's kind of the opposite problem of a lot of other builds where you get RP starvation, rune starvation. No, this one is the opposite. This one's the machine. You'll have lots. And how you use it will determine your DPS. And when you use your cooldowns will determine your DPS. Um, so you pretty much want to use how on cooldown. So whenever it's off. But hunger and rune weapon, instead of being a, uh, a damage cooldown, you use it like empowered rune weapon. You just use it when you're empty. Um, though I will try to advise you try not to use it during uh, bloodlust. So I did a couple attempts on this, and it seems to adversely affect DPS. So uh, definitely try and not use it during bloodlust. Just in this build specifically, because we're trying to get runes from HRW, not DPS. Uh, so it's a bit of an interesting quirk. Um, I mean, most of the time you shouldn't use uh, HRW during, you know, Bloodless because it caps out your haste and then you're you know, not optimizing. But, you know, sometimes it can be warranted if you're doing like a burst on some ads uh, with other builds like SS, Shattering Strikes, HRW. Anyway, enough prefab. Let's get into this. Just gonna make sure we're good to go. Alright, here we go. Oh, that's the infamous latency of PTR servers. Gotta love that. Just good old thing first. So you can see here we're holding Hunger and Rune Weapon. And we're gonna use it as soon as we deplete, which will probably happen here? No, maybe soon. See our DPS is uh, holding nicely there at 1.4 after the opening salvo, so that's good. Getting some decent RNG here on that runic empowerment. Hold off a second. There you are, unholy strength. Bam. Got a nice 
nice concordance and holy here. And I might need to HR over here. No, no, we're good still. Alright, we'll do it now. So if uh, you know stranger to HRW, you know this is the best part of any HRW build. That actually went surprisingly smoothly. <laughs> so, it's pretty much never that smooth. Yeah, no crit there on that CH, but that's alright. See now DPS is down to 1.3. That's not bad at all. Yeah, squeak that in on that concordance buff. That's just as good. Yeah, so when I use um cold heart you may notice that I do like to buff watch and if at all possible to use concordance along with path of frost and or unholy strength and or concordance even better if you get all three it's pretty unlikely though so don't wait for concordance all right so let's throw these down now Cantos perfectly line up uh, Bloodlust, because you know, in some fights, it's not going to be up exactly when you want it to, so. It's good to just throw it down and kind of surprise yourself when you use it. That's a good push. 1.28 mil. Nice, nice. And, oh, look at that. Triple buff. No, oh, give me. 7.5. Nice. Give me DPS, baby. 129. Just keep that going. Send how it there. Getting our HRW. Yeah, right about now. Yeah, this is gonna be one of those fun ones. Oh no! Fuck you! That overpowered Procker at the end. our time at 5 minutes 30. Alright, just give us a couple more seconds. So let's use that how there. Yeah, that's good enough. So, 1.28. Very good. You can see Frost Strike on top. Closely followed by Obliterate. Yeah, on a lot of these attempts, it seems like Obliterate and Howling Blast sometimes will switch places. It just depends on crits, right? Because, I mean, look at Howling Blast. Like, what the fuck? Howling Blast gets those big crits, and so if you get a couple of those, a couple extra of those in the fight, it'll push it over um, Obliterate. Uh, Cold Heart here, a little bit low, you know, you like to see about 35 million, 37, that's, that's when you know you got good Cold Hearts. Uh, as you can see, we got two crits, <laughs> two crits out of eight casts, that's, uh, that's too bad, oh well. 31 mil on uh, Remorse Splinter, that's good. One crit, no one non crit. That's pretty much as good as it gets. I wouldn't ask for more. And our uh, four piece for T21 
is uh, still pretty crappy. You know, 0.5% DPS, and you know, just so that you know, this is Dread Torrent, just Dread Torrent. This is Spectre of Betrayal, right? That's eye level 9, 10 Spectre of Betrayal. It does 2.6% or 11 million. Our four piece does one fifth of that. It's actually less than a fifth of what the Spectre of Betrayal trinket does. So, there's your comparison. <laughs> it just slightly beats Frozen Soul. <laughs> so, it's not very good. That's too bad. But uh, I'm sure they'll fix it. For now, though, it's pretty good. Well, not it, but yeah. Let's look at the buff up time. So, Unholy Strength. You can see we had a lot of Unholy Strength up time. That's actually really irregular. Jeez, that's a, that's a lot of Unholy Strength. 81%. Wow. 46% uh, Pillar of Frost. Yeah, that's about, that's about average. Good up time for Pillar of Frost would be 50%. If you see more than 50%, you're on... Uh, Goldilocks zone. Concordance, Jesus, 45% uptime. Also pretty irregular. Usually that's like 35-ish. So those are both overperforming. Uh, and I used potions of prolonged power on both those attempts. No problem there. So that's pretty good. It's a, it's a pretty solid build. Again, credit to Melicus for this one. He is the tireless simmer, and I like to think of myself as the tireless tester. And this is another nice build. Alright, thanks for tuning in. Take it easy.